All right, welcome. In this um, video, we are going to learn how to load a remotely sensed data. In this case, it will be Landsat image. Landsat image. And um, let me just uh, tell you a little about the Landsat program. The Landsat program is over 40 years. Uh, of image acquisition and it started from Landsat 1 through to Landsat um, 8 and probably 9 which is set to launch in um, 2023 and but presently we are using the Landsat 8 satellites and um, like I told you earlier one of the satellites um, there has been eight Landsat satellites anyway one of them did it make it into orbit, but the other seven satellites did. So, like I said, Landsat 9 is planned for 2023, and it all began with Landsat 1 in 1972. Originally, it was named Earth Resources Technology Satellite, which is has have been an acronym of ERTS. However, that changed to Landsat. Now, Landsat 8 is called Landsat Data Continuity Mission, but generally, it's referred to as uh, Landsat 8 and um, we're going to be talking about the several spectral bands of Landsat 8 and um, all the other characteristics but just a quick one Landsat 8 has got 11 bands from the band 1 coastal aerosol through the band 10 and 11 which is the which is about the, uh, the, the, the thermal infrared sensor, the bands at bands 1 to band 9, uh, it, um, it generates, uh, it's used for, uh, by the optical land imager sensor, OLI sensor. It generates nine spectral bands and um, it's about the Landsat 8 and um, uh, for Landsat 7, it has 8 spectral bands. For Landsat 5 and 4, which is also okay, like Landsat 7 is called the Enhanced Thematic Mapper. Landsat 5 and 4 are called the Thematic Mapper. Landsat 3, 2 and 1 are called the Multi Spectral Scanner. Uh, Landsat um, 3, 2 and 1 have uh, 4 uh, bands. Um, we're going to talk about that briefly. What we're going to do right now is to navigate uh, to open up um, uh, MV and uh, we have MV there and uh, the next thing is to before then we are going to unzip uh, the Landsat data and um, all you have to do it comes in a compressed uh, full, uh, in compressed uh, file like this so what you're going to be doing is to unzip it and then um, yes so it kind of takes a while but while it's unzipping we'll just pause the video for it to finish unzipping it takes some uh, amount of time all right we're all set the um, various Landsat bands have been um, unzipped into this um, uh, particular folder so uh, just a quick one um, this um, Landsat 8 has got all these bands here which we're going to be talking about as the band 1, band 2, band 3, band 4, band 5 and all that like I said it has um, 11 spectral bands for, band, uh, for the Landsat uh, 8 and um, we're going to be using this mtl.txt file which is the metadata file for our various applications so and uh, now that um, we have loaded our uh, our mv software we're going to go ahead and um, open the landsat file so we navigate to where we have the Landsat file and you go ahead and look for this one that has this extension 
mtl.txt. That's what we're going to be using to load the Landsat files. Now it's getting to load. So once it loads, we're going to look at them briefly and see how they, they work. Remember, I told you that the default, when we were setting our environmental variables, uh, the default is to have um, uh, uh, the loaded images to load the, uh, the true color composites, which we are going to be looking at um, pretty quickly. Okay, here, this has been loaded. And um, you can see this particular one has the multi-spectral bands. And um, we have the coastal aerosol, that's band one. The blue band, that's band two. The green band, band three. That's the, these are all in the visible portion of the spectrum. The blue, the green, and the red band. And uh, we have the near infrared uh, band, which is the band five. We have the short wave infrared one, which is the band six, and we have a uh, short wave infrared two, which is the band seven. Here in the brackets are uh, their center wavelengths, because for example, for the blue band, the wavelength that um, the, this OLI senses is from 0 0.45 to 0 0.51 micrometers, and um, this it's just indicating their center wavelengths. And uh, for the panchromatic band, uh, we have just um, one band, that is the band eight. The band nine is the serous band. And um, while this is the thermal infrared band, like I said, oh, uh, Landsat 8 has two sensors, so sensors aboard the satellite, the, the OLI optical land imager, and the TIRS sensor, which is the thermal infrared sensor. And I will just begin by saying that all these have got a special resolution of 30 meters. All these, the blue, the green, the near infrared, and um, the panchromatic band is the high resolution band, which is um, 15, that's the special resolution of 15 meters. And uh, the thermal infrared bands have special resolutions of um, 100 meters. It's good for us to note that. And um, just briefly talk about these bands. Uh, this um, uh, coastal aerosol band is senses deep blues and violets. And um, because blues are easily scattered by tiny bits of dust and water in the air, and this is um, one of the very reasons why mountains may appear to be blue. Uh, mountains in the horizon appear bluish and the sky is blue. And just like we see a lot of hazy blue when we look up to the space on a sunny day, Landsat 8 sees uh, the sky below when it looks down through the same air. So this is this part of the spectrum, the coastal uh, aerosol spectrum, is very very difficult uh, to collect. Uh, but Landsat 8 has um, enough sensitivity to be able to collect this um, uh, this particular uh, data from this particular spectrum, and that is one of the many things that is making Landsat 8 uh, very very special. So and um, this band is mainly used for imaging shallow water and tracking fine particles like uh, dust and smoke. So by itself, it's, the output looks like a lot like band 2, which is the visible blue. And um, we can't see them normally, but uh, once you look at them and contrast them, you can see their little differences. So the blue green and red band which is called the v uh, visible portion of the spectrum 
approximates natural color where water appears blue, vegetation green, and other surfaces are in shades of red. And um, for this other band 5, the near infrared band, um, since water absorbs uh, nearly all light in this wavelength, uh, water bodies may actually appear black. And this is traditionally used to produce the color infrared color composite where you assign this uh, this near infrared band to band um, to the red band and this to the green band and the visible green to be blue bands to produce the color infrared um, um, uh, um, color composite. So we're going to be talking about all this. And then the pachromatic band is um, uh, the high resolution band. We're going to be using it for pan sharpening when we get there to increase the spatial resolution of uh, satellite images to make uh, um, quality, qualitative uh, analysis better. And the pan band essentially works like uh, just the like your traditional black and white film. So instead of collecting various colors from band two, the green, the red, I mean the blue, the green, and the red bands, it combines all of them into a particular channel, into just one channel to produce the pan band or the panchromatic band. So because this sensor sees more light at once, it is the sharpest of all uh, of all the bands with a spatial resolution of 15 meters like i said all other ones have got uh, a spatial resolution of 30 meters and then the 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 thermal band has um, a, a spatial resolution of 100 meters but then okay the cirrus band here which is the band 9. Uh, this is what I call the cloud band. It shows the least, yet it's one of the most interesting features of Landsat 8. It covers a very thin slice of wavelength uh, um, within about um, 1.373 micrometers, plus or minus 10 micrometers, anyway, in that particular ring. So very few space-based instruments collect um, this information in this part of the spectrum because almost all the atmosphere absorbs almost all of it but Landsat 8 turns this into an advantage because the ground is barely visible in this band anything that appears clearly in it must be reflecting very bright uh, or above the atmosphere so and this is the band uh, you would look at when checking out the quality thumbnails in deciding which data band to use because it essentially shows you the amount of cloud cover when we get to there analyzing the image quality you will see that particular information there so like i said band um, 10 and 11 are the thermal band with a resolution of 100 meters they essentially see heat so instead of measuring temperature of the air like weather stations do and um, they just report on the ground itself so now that we have got uh, a brief introduction into all this uh, what this does is to or have this optimized linear remember when we are setting environment variables we said it should um, output this particular color composite the true color composite where the red the green and the blue are assigned to their various uh, channels so let's um, like i said earlier we have got some tools here this is to if you hover your cursor around this you see this essentially shows the cursor values if you uh, place them here it will show you some of this information the longitude and the latitude as the coordinates the projection and all and um, the data uh, the dn numbers which are shown here and it's telling you that you are dealing with the multi-spectral uh, files here so we have this projection is utm 
universal traverse mercator in zone 32 with the data the world geodetic system 84. now also what you can also do is this uh, using this uh, particular one is to select this other one essentially gives you this crosshair where you can use it to move about and to particular places and it shows you the information where your crosshair is uh, we're going to be using a lot of that and also this is the hand tool or the pan tool it's essentially used to move this data anywhere we may want to and um, other ones may be used but this is to actually zoom it in a very specified order you know and uh, this is the zooming we can use it to actually zoom into the image and uh, this you will be used to zoom out and this actually brings it to the full extent and this is the full extent of the landsat scene like i said a landsat scene is about 170 to 185 kilometers as the length and the width that's about the size of a scene and um, if we look at here this actually tells us about the scale of uh, the imagery so if we want um, like this is the full extent so if we want any scale like this one by 250,000 we can put it here so it will show us exactly that for every cm here we are having 2.5 kilometer of uh, I mean the one cm on map here represents 2.5 kilometers on ground like we said we have the knot up and that's why the orientation is zero and um, this is for the spectral profile we're going to be using all that sooner or later so we can have the optimized linear there are several stretches which you can apply and let's say we want to apply the two percent linear look at how our image kind of uh, looks like so essentially that is what it's all about and if you look at this bottom here it's trying to create a pyramid of uh, this particular image pyramids essentially allows our data to load much faster than um, it is so we are going to stop here but one last thing i'm going to show you in this uh, particular video it's uh, for you to come back to this um, environment just the way you have left it it will advise you to just save this view you know you save this um, this view and so that whenever you come back you can uh, bring it back so they just name it lab one you know so it has this extension dot json that's the view so whenever we come we don't need to load these things again we just need to open up the view and um, we've essentially got it and that uh, ends uh, the video for this series